We all know that air, fuel, and spark is the recipe for combustion in gasoline engines. But from the three, spark is probably the least understood and underestimated variable. Ignition timing refers to the moment, relative to crankshaft angle, when the mixture is ignited to start the combustion process. There is often a misconception that spark is triggered when the piston is at top dead center. But the truth is that fuel does not start burning the instant the spark is lit. Therefore, ignition timing must be advanced, typically by about 10 to 30 degrees before top dead center. The objective behind this is to get the most out of every power stroke by allowing enough time for pressure to build up and achieve its peak approximately between 8 and 12 degrees up to the top dead center. The spark advance value that yields the highest torque is known as MBT and it stands for maximum brake torque timing or minimum timing for best torque. Since pressure is what pushes down the piston generating power, it is usually a good reference point to measure performance. If ignition starts too late in the cycle, the piston can literally run away from the expanding explosion. This is especially inefficient for power performance since the build pressure is wasted, but it also creates catalyst overheating and higher emission problems since less of the combustion occurs inside the cylinder. On the other hand, if ignition starts too soon, peak pressure will be reached before the piston even gets to top dead center. On this scenario, the piston finds itself fighting against very large forces as it moves up on the compression stroke. This often creates a large amount of knock and therefore possible damage to your engine. A typical ignition timing map is composed of two combined tables, an MBT map and a knock map. For the MBT map, calibrators compare the relationship between spark timing and torque until they find the value that generates the best performance. For the knock map, Timing is slowly advanced until knock occurs. This point is known as knock limit. Then that variable is retarded about 1 to 2 degrees as a safety margin. This is the reason why aftermarket tuners have some area for improvement. Once these two tables have been established, the lowest value per speed and load is selected for the ignition timing map. Why you ask? Let's think of an example. If MBT occurs at 10 degrees before top dead center, and knock limit is at 15 degrees, there is no reason to go past 10 degrees. On the contrary, let's assume that MBT happens at 15 degrees before top dead center, but knock limit is at 10 degrees. You don't want to damage the engine, so the safe thing is to stay below 10 degrees. There are many factors that affect ignition timing, such as fuel octane, air fuel ratio, engine temperature, engine speed, and engine load. So let's take a look at this sample ignition timing map. On the x-axis, we have engine speed in revolutions per minute. On the y-axis, we have engine load denoting the percentage of measured intake air compared to the theoretical maximum. Right away, we notice that there is a wide range of values, but typically all engines regardless of make and model follow the same trend. Timing decreases as load increases, and it increases as engine speed increases. Let's understand the reasons behind this. Since there is higher vacuum at low load, timing is increased to compensate for the lack of power. As load increases, timing is retarded to prevent knock from the larger pressure. Next, assuming a constant air fuel ratio, a higher engine speed means the flame expansion speed is the same, but there is less time between cycles. Therefore, Ignition timing must be advanced to achieve maximum pressure at the optimal point. You have probably already noticed that to finalize this map, it would take a very long time. For instance, 13 engine speeds, 10 loads, 20 ignition timing samples, 15 minutes per point. It would take 39,000 minutes or approximately 81 days in 8 hour shifts. This is why calibrators use a method called Design of Experiments or DOE where the relationship between the multiple variables is studied by collecting strategic sample points between the low and high limits. In this specific case, 600 to 6000 RPM, 10 to 100% load, and 0 to 35 degrees before top dead center. The data is then converted into a mathematical model to display the results graphically and the surface becomes a map. Finally, 
The last step is collect data outside of your sample pool to confirm the model accuracy and adjust accordingly. This greatly reduces the time and resources needed to complete a calibration. Well, that's it for today's episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.